Hi, good afternoon everyone. So as promised, uh, I will be discussing our case study once again. So this time, a bit of a slower pace. So just really wanted to highlight what are the things to do in terms of our basic transaction analysis and our advanced transaction analysis. And then from there, I will do a quick overview in terms of our four various financial statements. So like what I've mentioned, in terms of accounting, the reason why mahirap siya is that you will encounter a lot of long problems. So each module, I want us to have a landmark case study. And like what I've mentioned for module one, our landmark case study would be Macy Taft Consulting, um, wherein ito yung given sa atin. So basically, the overall business context of this is that Macy is basically an entrepreneur. She started her consulting uh, firm and it started on May 1, 2020. And then across the whole month of May, from May 1 to May 30, various events happen. So as a outside this 1 to 30, syempre marami rin mga personal events, nagtayo siya ng mga, um, she, she basically got all of her supplies, etc., etc. But for this, the first thing that we wanted to do is to itemize and determine ano yung mga various economic events. And for this, yung given, we provided various economic events. And ano yung gagawin natin sa given? Basically, the expectation for you is that at the end of this module, you'll be able to do the first uh, level of accounting analysis. So what would the first level of accounting analysis look like? So first, it would start with basic transaction analysis. So basically, analyzing each economic event under the simple equation, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity, making sure that under each economic event, na maintain natin yung balance that if an asset increases, then either a liability or an equity increases. Or conversely, kung may isang asset na bumaba, may isang asset na aakyat. Para at the end of the day, each time you have a transaction, we maintain the balance between the accounting equation. Yung second part, which is basically the last thing that we step, uh, the last thing that we discussed during our morning lecture, would be the advanced transaction analysis. So from here, honestly, pareho lang siya ng basic transaction analysis. The only difference would be that we will now use the expanded accounting equation. So instead of just assets in general, we will break it down and determine which particular and specific asset. Is it cash? Is it receivable? Is it supplies? Is it equipment? Same with liabilities. What kind of liability do you owe? Is it an accounts payable, meaning may utang ka to another party? Or it's, is it a notes payable, meaning may utang ka sa bank? And then finally, for equity, these are the four components that we discussed. So owner's capital, meaning nag-invest ka ng money into your firm. Owner's drawings, meaning nag-withdraw ka. And then you have your revenue and your expenses. And then finally, once natapos mo yung advanced transaction analysis, then you can use this table in order to generate um, three of the four financial statements, namely income statement, changes in statement and equity, and then your balance sheet. So basically, I know it's a lot to take in. So let's again start from the beginning. So step one would be, first is we did our basic transaction analysis. So we have our economic events here. We analyzed what would be the accounting items that will be in effect, uh, affected. So for every transaction, we took note of the movements and the flow of each component. And then notice that for every transaction, there is at least two movements maintaining the balance. So on one side, on your left side, you have your assets. On your right side, you have your liabilities and equity. So let's take uh let's look at different examples. Number one, Macy invested 7,000 cash in the business. So tumaas si assets because tumaas yung cash. But at the same time, on the right side, your equity also increases kasi nagkaroon ka ng additional investment. Right. So let's look at number three. In number three, it said, purchase 800 uh, euros worth of supplies on account. So now, ano yung nangyari? Tumaas yung supplies natin. So tumaas si asset. But ano yung tumaas? Yung liability. Because on account means that you bought it, but you haven't really paid cash. So may utang ka to a third party. Specifically, accounts payable. So again, on the left side, tumaas si supplies. On the right side, tumaas si accounts payable. So nagme-maintain pa rin yung balance. So you have to make sure that per economic event, nagme-maintain natin yung balance. 
So uh, a last example for this, for basic transaction analysis, is number 23. So ito, hindi na-affect si liability in si equity. Ang na-affect is two subcomponents of assets. So let's look at number 23. It said here, receive 4,000 euros for the May 15 services on account. So ano ba nangyari sa May 15? Nung May 15, nakabenta ka raw or nagkaroon ka ng service revenue worth 6,400. However, rather than getting cash, ang tumaas sa atin on May 15 would be accounts receivable. So ano ulit ang accounts receivable? You haven't received 6,400. May utang lang yung other person sa yon na 6,400. So going back to May 23, since binayaran ka na out of those 6,400, 4,000 was paid. Ang mangyayari is your account receivable will go down 4,000, but your cash component will go up 4,000. So same asset class on the left side, you have your asset. Tumaas si cash, bumaba si accounts receivable, na may maintain pa rin yung equilibrium or yung balance per economic event. So basically, yung next step naman natin is once we're done with transac basic transaction analysis, we now use the advanced transaction analysis wherein rather than assets, liability, and equity, we're now gonna look at number one, ano yung specific accounts affected? And then number two, what are the number or ano yung monetary unit that impacted it? And then syempre, may mga signs na to. So if, it's a, uh, if it increased, then it's a positive. If it decreased or if it's an owner's drawings or an expense, it's negative. So since medyo parang nagmadali tayo in terms of like advanced transaction analysis, let's now redo the advanced transaction analysis and then let's take it again one economic event at a time. So um, ito, so basically let's do the basic transaction analysis. So we've done that already. So pareho lang rin yan, pero rather than arrows indicating kung up or down, let's now include monetary units or monetary figures. So again, pasadahan natin from May 1 to May 30. So what does your advanced transaction analysis table look like? So you have your left side, your assets, you have your right side, and the major goal mo is to check if your total assets is equal to your total liabilities plus total equity. Okay, so now that we're done that with that, let's now go over each and every economic event. Number one, Macy invested 7,000 cash in the business. We've already discussed this. Tumaas si cash ng 7,000. And then, kailangan tumaas ni owner's capital. So, 7,000, 7,000. Left side, 7,000. Right side, 7,000. Balanced. May 1 economic event, we have balanced it. Number 2, May 2. Paid eight, 900 euros for office rent for the month. So, office rent for the month. Meaning, may rent expense ka. Kasi nagbayad ka eh. So, rent expense of 900 and since nababa, nabawasan si cash, that would be an outflow of cash. So, minus 900 euros in cash, 900 expense. So, since expense, negative. So, negative 900 on the left. On the right, negative 900. Balance tayo sa May 2 event. Let's go to May 3 event. May 3 event, you purchased 800 euros of supplies on account. So, again, when you see the word on account, either it's an accounts receivable or an accounts payable. So ito, since you purchased it, ang account nun is may utang ka to another party. Therefore, it's a accounts payable. So tumaas si supplies ng 800. So si supplies at 800. Pero tumaas rin yung liability mo kasi you have to pay for it in the near future. So 800 accounts payable. Left side, your supplies went up 800. Right side, your accounts payable have increased to 800. May 3 event, balanced. 800 is equal to 800. May 5, you paid 125 euros to advertise in the country news. So again, you paid. So that's as, uh, bumaba yung cash mo ng 125 for advertising. So similar to rent, that would be an advertising expense. So for May 5, ang balance natin is bumaba si cash, negative 125. Si expense, negative 125. Nagbalance tayo for the May 5 event. May 9 event. 
you receive 4,000 euros in cash for services performed. So now, nakatanggap ka. And because nakatanggap ka, that would mean 4,000 plus uh, sa cash. So 4,000 increase sa cash. And that would be your service revenue. So again, nag-balance tayo sa main line. 4,000 cash increase revenue increased by 4,000. Balance tayo on the May 9 economic event. May 12, you withdrew 1,000 for personal use. Okay, so May 12, nag-withdraw ka ng 1,000. So, bumaba yung cash mo and nagkaroon ka ng negative 1,000 for owner's drawings. So again, I want to highlight, kapag owner's drawings and expense, those will be negative because it brings down your equity account. Okay? Next. May 15, you performed again 6,400 of services on account. So dahil nag-perform ka, then dapat kumita ka. So that means you have 6,400 in revenue. So tumaas yung revenue mo. But the question is, were you paid cash? No. So ang ibig sabihin, again, meron ka na namang term na on account. Meaning, that's gonna be 6,400 increase of accounts receivable. Meaning, you have 6,400 na, kware ako, si Macy ako, nag-consult ako to um, a client named Denise. So si Denise owes me 6,400. So that's a revenue on my end, pero hindi ko pa nagiging cash. So we'll go to the May 23 event later to see na pag binayaran niya ako, ano yung effect, right? But so far, under May 15, nag-balance tayo. Receivable goes up, which is an asset, and then your revenue goes up, which is equity. So balance pa rin tayo on the May 15. For May 17, um, paid 2,500 for employee salary. So, nagbayad ka na naman. So, bumaba si cash. Pero, meron kang salaries expense of 2,500. 18. Yung 1,000 pesos raw na ginamit mo on May 12, ginamit mo pang bilhin ng shoes. The answer here is, there is no effect. Because, nakuha mo na, inatanggal mo na sa business. So, whatever you do with that money, pinangbili mo ng chichirya, pinangbili mo ng Airbnb rent, etc., etc., it wouldn't affect because of the economic event or economic entity principle. So therefore, no effect siya on the firm itself or in the consulting agency itself. Let's go to May 20. You paid 600 for supplies purchased on May 3. So ano yung May 3? Ito, yung 800. So yun yung 800 mong utang. Pero siguro wala ka pang pera pang bayad so you just paid for a portion of this. So what will happen? Siyempre, you paid money, may cash outflow ka, so less cash of 600, and your accounts payable, or yung utang mo, goes down by 600. So now, ang utang mo na lang is probably 200. 800 dati, binayara mo yung 600, so 200 na lang. So on May 20, nagbalance na naman tayo. On the left side, bumaba si cash. On the right side, bumaba si liability. So balance pa rin. 20, May 23, Receive 4,000. So ito naman, baliktad. Yung 6,400 mo na revenue or yung receivable, nakatanggap ka raw ng 4,000. So meaning, ang ma-affect nito is all asset side. Bababa yung receivable of 4,000, pero tataas yung cash mo ng 4,000. So tumaas si asset ng 4,000, bumaba siya ng 4,000, net effect zero, right? So nag-balance siya with the rest of the liabilities and equity na walang gumalaw. So in May 23, nag-balance pa rin siya on a per economic event. May 26, you borrowed 5,000 from the bank. So pag humihinga ka sa bank or nag-loan ka sa bank, that's usually a notes payable. So basically, what will happen is, since umutang ka, tumaas yung cash mo of 5,000. So tumaas yung asset ng cash of 5,000. Tumaas yung liability. Left side, right side, balanced. Last three. May 29, you purchase equipment. So, tumaas si equipment on account. So, tumaas rin si liability. So, may another liability ka na naman. So, 4,200. And then finally, you paid 275 for utilities. So, 275 for utilities. Bumaba si cash. That's probably a utilities expense. 275. So, step one, under each economic event, make sure na you identify ano ba yung mga two, at least two accounts that are affected by this. And then, aside from that, double check kung nagbabalance pa yung accounting equation that your assets is equal to your liabilities plus equity. So now, to double check, 
the next step is after mo gawin yon per economic event, we're now gonna solve for the subtotal. So kindly give me a moment and I will bring up my calculator. So ito yung calculator natin. So let's start. Let's look at cash first. So we have 7,000 minus 900 minus 125 plus 4,000 minus 1,000 minus 25 minus 600 plus 4,000 plus 5,000 minus 275 is 14,600. So out of the May 1 to May 30, ang final total balance ng cash mo would be 14,600. Next, we go to receivable. Ito, madali lang. Dalawa lang yung nag-affect. So, 6,400, nagkaroon ka ng accounts receivable, pero nakuha mo in cash ng 4,000. So, ang, ang account receivable na lang is 2,400. Supplies, wala naman nangyari, so that's 800. Equipment is 4,200. Um, accounts payable, let's solve for it. So, left side's done. Right side naman tayo. Right side meaning itong after the black, right? So, 800 minus 600 and then plus 4,200 4,400 and then ito, notes payable 5,000, 7,000 negative 1,000, your owner's drawings um, revenue is 4,000 plus 6,400 4,000 plus 6,400 10,400. And then expenses, um, since all negative naman, I'll just add that. So 900 plus 125 plus 2,500 plus 275 3,800. Negative 3,800. So now that you have your subtotals, the last step is what are total assets what are total liabilities and what are total equity? So let's start with assets. 14,600 of cash plus 2,400 of receivables plus 800 of supplies plus 4,200 of equipment is equal to 22,000. So your assets is 22,000. Now, ano expectation niya sa liabilities and equity? That pag inad mo yung liabilities and equity, pag inad natin to lahat, itong a, uh, itong itong anim na to, it should equal to twenty two thousand. So let's double check. Ano yung total liabilities natin? Four four plus five thousand. Four thousand four hundred plus five thousand. Nine thousand four hundred. Okay. And then let's be aware. So seven thousand capital owners capital. Minus, kasi owner's drawings of 1,000 plus 10,400 of revenue. And then minus, kasi expense, of 3,8. So 12,600. So now, 12,600 of equity plus 9,400 equals 22,000. 22,000 is equal to 22,000. Nag-balance. That means we probably did um okay in terms of the analysis for um Macy Consulting. So assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. 22,000 is equal to 9,400 plus 12,600. So again, to take note, kapag expense, it's negative, please. And owner's drawings, negative. Why? Because it decreases your equity. Okay? So... It's all about knowing lang where to classify them. It's reading comprehension, knowing which two accounts are affected. At least two. Mayroon mga later in the more comprehensive one, magiging more than two yan. But for now, it's at least two accounts. And then for each economic event, make sure that it balances the left side, meaning the assets, and the right sides, your liabilities and your equities.
So now, the last step is, okay, tapos na tayo sa advanced transaction analysis. Let's now prepare financial statements. So basically, in accounting, there are five financial statements. You have your income statement, your balance sheet, your changes in equity, your cash flows, and your notes. For now, for 99.1, our focus would be this three. Your income statement, your changes in equity, and then your balance sheet. And then the last two would be good to know. So, ano ba yung cash flows and ano yung notes? So, notes are supplemental and just basically used to explain. So, yung cash flows na 99.2, but I'll just share with you an overview. So, isa-isahin natin. First, we have what you call our income statement or our statement of comprehensive income. So, ang income statement, what does it tell users or what does it tell accountants? It's a measure of performance. Performance in terms of what? In terms of profitability. Maganda ba? May net income ba? May net loss? Ano yung revenues mo? Ano yung expenses mo? For a specific period of time. So, for a specific period. So, we're talking about a period of time. So, please, kapag income statement, it's for the period ending blank. Ending December 31. So ito, ang major goal natin is, ano ba ang net income or ano ba ang net loss? So ano yung format? From your advanced transaction analysis, since we're only concerned about net income or net loss, we're gonna ignore all of these and focus on the last two columns, our revenue and our expense accounts. So basically, ang titignan lang natin is yung revenue minus expenses. So, ito is a snapshot of Macy Consulting. I blurred it out so that we can focus on revenues and expenses. So, anong itsura ng format ng isang income statement? First is the name of the company, first row. Second row, the name of the statement, income statement. Now, please, ito yung important. Palagi na, marami nagkakamali. Since it's a measure of performance for the period of time, we will always say the phrase, for the month ended blank. So since it was a month of May, for the month ended May 31. And then, yun yung heading, yun yung mga labels. Three points rin yan. So please take that into account. Ano yung mga major segments? Ang major segments is, we get the total revenues, we get the total expenses, and then we get or solve for the net income or the net loss. So, step one, total revenues. So, and it, we look at the revenue column. May dalawa tayo. So, 4,000. So, 10,400. So, 4,000 plus 64, yung subtotal is 10,400 of revenue. Next, under expenses, hindi kasi siya bucketed under service revenue. May iba-ibang expenses. May rent expense, merong advertising expense, may utilities. So, hindi natin siya ibabalk na 3,800. We're gonna itemize ano ba yung mga different expenses. And ideally, we itemize it kung sino yung pinakamataas na expense first para alam natin kung sino yung mga uh, number one expense drivers. So, with this, for expenses, we start with the pinaka biggest, the 2,500. That was our salary expense. Next is the 900 rent expense. The 125, uh, 275 utilities expense, and then the 125 advertising expense. And then alam na natin sub total, that's 3,800. So now, how do we solve for net income? Revenue minus expense. So let's get the calculator. 10,400 minus 3,8. Six thousand six hundred. So we have six thousand six hundred in terms of our net income, right? So using the income statement, ang end mo is net income. So again, what are the four steps? Know the format, get the total revenues, arrange the total expenses on the level of kung sino yung pinakamataas, and then compute for your net income and net loss. So now that we know our net income and net loss, the next step is changes in equity. So ito lang yung example niya. So another look, nature ng isang income statement. So again, income statement for the month ended, for the year ended because it's a period of time. Next, we now go to the second statement, the statement of changes in equity. 
So it indicates the reason why equity or yung equity components increase or decrease during the period. So same sila ng income statement. It's for a period. So now, aside from the revenues and expenses, titingnan na rin natin yung owner's capital and your owner's drawings because those are the four components of equity, right? Your investments, your drawings, and your revenues and expenses or roughly your net income and net loss. So for this, ito na. So kanina, ito lang yung tinignan natin, but now all four. But for things to be easier, hindi na natin masyadong pagtituunan ng pansin yung revenues and expenses. Because if you want to know the focus of that, you look at an income statement. Instead, we're just gonna get the net income from or net loss that we got from the income statement. And then ipa-plug in natin siya in the statement of changes in owner's equity. So let's explain. Number one, step zero, format muna tayo. Row one, Macy Consulting, the name of the company. Row two, the name of the financial statement. Statement of changes in owner's equity. Row three is for the period what? For the month ended May 31. Now, let's look at the major parts of what is a changes in owner's equity. Number one is you start with the beginning capital. Ko ano yung capital mo at the start of the period? Second, ano ba yung mga things that increased your capital, your equity? What are the things that decreased your equity? And then finally, you use that to compute the ending capital. So what are the things that increase your equity? Either investments or net income. What are the things that less or subtract under your equity? With drawings or net loss. So for this example, our beginning capital is zero because kaka-start lang ni Macy nung consulting niya. So zero, nag-start yung equity niya zero. Then you add, ano ba yung mga things that affected? Well, at the start row, yung owner's capital, you look at this, 7,000, nag-invest siya. So you have an investment of 7,000. What are the other things that increased or decreased her capital? Ah, my net income siya from the, net, uh, from the income statement. So the net income, because it's an income, it's an addition. So 6,600. So ang total additions is 13,600. Now, ano yung bumaba, nagpababa na equity? Well, yung expenses are already under the net income. So ang only thing na lang missing is the owner's drawings. So list the deduction. So owner's drawings, 1,000. So 1,000. So now, let's solve for the ending capital. So we started with zero. We started with zero. So zero plus 13,600, which is the total additions, minus 1,000, 12,600 yung ending capital. So 12,600 yung ending capital niya. Right? So the last step is now that you know your equity, so 12,600, let's double check. 12,600, total equity is 12,600. Correct yung statement of changes in owner's equity. So mapapansin nyo, yung 6,600 was taken from the income statement. Why hindi na lang natin nilist down your revenues and expenses? Because your statement of changes in owner's equity wants to focus on the movements of equity. If you want specific breakdowns of revenues and expenses, you look at your income statement. So, ang kinukuha lang natin from the income statement would be the net income or net loss. So, let's say it was a net loss. Hindi dapat yung addition, but that would be a deduction. So, you'll see in other examples na pag net loss siya, it's less. It's a deduction, not an addition. So, ingat kayo doon kung net income or net loss. Finally, statement of financial position is a snapshot of the business financial condition at a specific moment in time. So, unlike income statement, Unlike statement of changes in equity, it's not going to be for a period, pero since snapshot siya, it's as of or at, the same, uh, at a specific date. So now, ang titingnan natin is the whole subtotals from assets all the way until equity. So itong last two rows. So the whole thing. So ito is just the parang subtotals under assets, under liabilities, and equity. So step zero, let's look at the format. The format is row one, paulit-ulit, Macy Consulting, name of the company. Row two, 
the name of the financial statement, statement of financial position. Row 3, hindi siya for the period ended kasi it's a snapshot. So if, since it's a snapshot, it's as of May 31, the last date of the month. Ano yung mga major components? Assets, liabilities plus owner's equity, liabilities, owner's capital. Yun lang. So now, let's get total assets. Yung assets, we list them ba down by the order of liquidity. What does that mean? Liquidity means how easy for is it for you to convert cash? So now, please memorize this. Ang pinaka-liquid, cash. Because cash is already cash. You don't have to turn it into cash, right? Number two, receivables. May utang sa yung tao. Madali lang yun i-convert to cash. Basta pag binayaran ka niya, magiging cash na yun. So, cash, and then accounts receivable second. Third, supplies. Supplies, basically, pwede mo siyang ibenta. Um, na kware, may steeper ka, benta mo lang, magkaka-cash ka. Equipment, medyo mahirap ibenta pag mas high ticket item. So, you list them down in the order of liquidity. So, 14,600 cash, 2,400 accounts receivable, 800 supplies, 4,200 equipment. If you total that, it should be your 22,000 total assets. Liabilities. So, accounts payable, 4,400, 5,000 total liabilities, 9,400. Equity, ito, hindi na natin titignan yung owner's capital, blah, blah, blah. Ang titignan na natin is 12,600. So, we get from the changes in equity. 12,600 owner's capital. So, 9,4 plus 12,6 is 22,000. So, nagbalance ba? Assets, 22,000 is equal to total liabilities plus owner's equity of 22,000. So, ito yung insurance ng statement of financial position. And as you can see, we got again from the changes in equity. So, last is statement of cash flows. So, ito, it's all about information on cash receipts and cash payment. So, ang tinitingin lang is yung cash. Kasi cash is very important in accounting. It talks about your liquidity as a company. But, 99.2 lang yan. There. So, in summary, if you want to get perfect in your module 1, chapter 1, you have to know basic transaction analysis. So, paano lang nag-move from assets is equal to liabilities plus equity? Then, lagyan natin ng isang level of complexity with advanced transaction analysis. What are the specific accounts that are affected? And then, once tama ka na sa advanced transaction analysis, honestly, memorization na lang yan on how to write the income statements. So, first, you start off with income statement so that you can get your net income and net loss na eventually ipa-plug in mo to your changes in equity. And then sa changes in equity naman, ang kukunin mo is yung ending owner's capital, which is then something that you can plug to your balance sheet. So again, step one, sa basic transaction analysis, you look at the movements and the flows on how it affects your assets, liabilities, and equity. Then lagyan mo ng numbers. Ano yung mga specific accounts? And get the subtotals for every account. And then once you have that table, get your income statement by looking at your revenue and expense columns lang. And from there, expand mo and get your statement of changes in owner's equity. So titignan mo lang dito is owner's capital, owner's drawings, and then net income or net loss. Again, if it's net income, it's an addition to capital. But if it's net loss, it should be a deduction. So dapat nandito yan, pag net loss. Then finally, kapag financial assets... um. Statement of financial position, you look at subtotals. So again, assets, you list in terms of liquidity. And then, for liabilities and owner's equity, kailangan lang mag-balance. Total assets is equal to total liabilities plus equity. There. So honestly, that ends your first chapter of the first module. So again, for this, in terms of doing the exercises, what I advise you to do is really double-check your advanced transaction analysis. Number two, before nyo gawin yung exercises, try nyo ulit i-recreate si Macy in a proper way. Handwritten all of the three financial statements. Kailangan second nature na sa inyo how to make income statements, statement of changes in equity, and financial possession. So for the next lesson, basically we'll just discuss the exercises. So again, please don't hyperfixate on the answer or the check figures. Know the process understand how to read the economic event. Kasi sometimes, kala nyo, ah, expense ba to? Revenue ba to? So, sanayan lang. So, please do the exercises. The deadline is September 20, 
at 7 a.m. before our class. Again, I'll see you online. And I hope you have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you so much.